Hello, everyone. I'm Kelly Covert, and this is At Home with Symphoria, and we have a very special guest today, our Director of Operations and Symphoria horn player, John Garland. John, welcome. Thanks. I'm so excited that I finally twisted your arm hard enough that you came to, <laughs> came away from your busy, uh, busy desk um, and all of the work that you do for us and that you decided to um, come and answer some questions about what exactly you're doing all the time, <laughs> <laughs> which is like a little bit of everything, right? I mean, it's a little bit of everything. That's right. I mean, you know, with all the uncertainty around uh, the future, there's a lot of you know, looking at, at uh, budgets and repertoire and, and uh, venues and how we're going to make things happen in the coming year. So that takes a lot of, uh, that takes most of my time, but uh, mm -hmm. it's good. Right? It's good. Uh, the good thing is it looks like, you know, we're going to have a plan in place to, to make things happen. So that's, that's, uh, that's, that's a great, uh, a great thing. Mm -hmm, for sure. And I think um, one of the things that people might not know, um, about you and about your job as director of operations is you, the work that you do spans, um, you know, from programming to getting guest artists, but also to like little things like figuring out how we're going to keep musicians safe. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Well, sure. I mean, we're, we're looking at, uh, you know, a lot of different things for the coming year and and for years after that even um one of the big things that's going on in in orchestras right now is a really serious discussion about diversity and that involves programming and guest artists and all sorts of different things uh we're lucky here our our orchestra has been really uh working on on this uh the orchestra the entire orchestra went through diversity training last year uh, our board's undergoing diversity training. The staff has undergone diversity training, and and we're really um, looking at programming and and all sorts of different things. So I, you know, I spend a lot of my time listening to to music that I'm not that familiar with, and and thinking about things that might might work well for us uh, to feature in our season. Um, and then certainly with the challenges going on uh, with COVID nineteen right now, um, you know making sure that our employees are safe and in everything that they do. Um, and, uh, you know, our staff has been able to work from home, which has been really, really a good thing. Um, but then as we look towards concerts in the future, um, you know, what that means for us in terms of how we distance ourselves on stage or barriers that we provide to make sure that, uh, um, you know, Folks aren't coming into contact with each other, or, or you know, with part of, uh, respiratory droplets, as they say. So, um, yeah, we've got a lot of a lot of things happening in that regard. So, uh, you know, not always uh, we're not quite there yet with all of our solutions, but we expect that we'll be uh, we'll be there by September. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think it's so interesting when when all of us set out um, on our path to become professional musicians. Would you ever have imagined that you would tr be trying to invent a pod to keep an, a, a wind player safe? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's uh, not usually on most people's minds. It wasn't really on my mind either. So, uh, but you know, the good thing is, is uh, the orchestra loves to play and uh, finding ways to make that possible uh, and to keep keep music going uh, here uh, for the community. It's, it's, a, it's a really, really wonderful thing that we've been able to focus our efforts on. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. And I think, you know, um, you probably will blush and say no when I say this, but um, for those of you who don't know, John Garland is instrumental in us even having an orchestra here in central New York. I mean, like, I really think if it weren't for you, I'm not sure that Symphoria would be here. And so this to me just feels like um, a really small thing compared to all of the work that you've done over the last several years, just to make sure that we're here. So I just want to acknowledge you right now in that. <laughs> well, you know, the, this uh, current environment is a really big challenge for a lot of orchestras around the country. We've seen so many, uh, you know, close for the fall or, or even in some cases close for the season. 
Um, so uh, we're, we're uh, really fortunate here. We've got such a dedicated group of musicians, you know, creating content for us uh, online and in, in all sorts of, uh, you know, ways that I'm sure nobody ever imagined that they would be doing. Um, that, uh, and, you know, thinking through next year and how we're gonna be able to present concerts and do live streaming for, um, for all of our concerts. Uh, that's really exciting, actually. So, uh, you know, I, music is, is a really interesting business. You just never know uh, from day to day what you'll be doing. Always new, new pieces to play and, and now uh, thinking about new ways to, to make those concerts happen. For sure. For sure. We have um, some people here with us today. Um, Ernie says, John is not instrumental. He is the reason why we're here. Now ask him why he never returns my phone calls. <laughs> yeah. um, and Larry Lowe is with us too. He says John equals Symphoria. So you've got some um, you've got some big fans far and wide, I would say. Um, I know you've been so busy like inventing um, things and uh, figuring out what our season is going to look like and all of the stuff that you do for us. But I'm curious to know if you've had any time to pick up your horn. Well, a little bit of time to pick up my horn. Um, this has seemed like a really ideal time to try out some different mouthpieces and other things that are, you know, uh, sort of, uh, we might think of as a little nerdy. So, uh, but, I, but I ordered a couple new mouthpieces and got to try them out a while back. One of them had to go away immediately. It was uh, not, not a workable solution. <laughs> the other one is sort of intriguing. So it's still, uh, it's still attached. <laughs> so, uh, but not, not too much uh, uh, playing in part because we just haven't had the same number of concerts to prepare for, but, uh, but it's good to keep a, a little bit of contact with the instrument, even in this time. Mm -hmm. Well, the good news is that you won't forget how to play. So, uh, you know, We'll be ready when it's time, right, John? Um, have you ever thought about what you might have done if you hadn't been a professional musician? Well, I used to think I'd be a pretty good attorney uh, for for had I gone a different way, um, but but now I'm you know I'm a little older now, so I think, gosh, if I wasn't doing this now, what would I do? And I, you know probably something maybe more more technically inclined I, i'm not sure exactly what that would be quite yet but uh um you know that would be an easier transition at this point <laughs> mm -hmm. well i um when we're in the office w back when we were in the office john was my resident you were my resident um spreadsheet explainer uh, because my brain is not organized in spreadsheets and i'm pretty sure that yours is and um, I value that deeply. So thank you. <laughs> Maybe someone will teach me how to make my brain look like that. Uh, I'm not sure. I think it'd be a hard ask. Um, but but yeah, like I think that you would be great at anything that you picked. That's for sure. Including attorney. I could totally see you doing that. So calm and cool all of the time. Um, do you have any guilty pleasures while you've been stuck at home these days? Well, there's one thing that I found that I, uh, I, you know, I'm not a big taker of naps. I've never really been much into napping, but something about being here at home, you know, day in and day out and some days, I mean, it doesn't happen very often, but the, it's happened a couple of times and I've had a really nice nap occasionally in the afternoon, like around 4.30. It's just, it's, uh, it's pretty great. <laughs> okay. Note to self, don't text John at 4.30. He's napping. <laughs> Um, Vicki Feldman is here and she, she says she hopes that you figured out what downtime is over the past few months. Have you like 30 minutes at a time here and there, it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually, it's been, it's been, uh, it's been nice. Uh, it, it was a little concerning initially because of course, you know, if you've got all your work right there with you and you don't go anywhere to do it, you, you can just work all the time. Uh, and, and we've done that before at different times of the organization's existence where we just needed to get a lot of things done. Um, but I was a little concerned that we, you know, would be in that for, for months at a time, but it, but it's actually been, it's been okay. We've managed to work out, um, for the orchestra, a really good, uh, system with video conferencing with one of our, with one of our board members, uh, who's been able to provide that for us. And, 
um, it's it's been actually really really great. We haven't totally lost contact with it with uh, the orchestra and the musicians, in part because of uh, technology. Mm -hmm. I've actually I've been really amazed at what we've been able to do not together. Absolutely, um, I'm really proud of us for that, and I I think like you and Pam, our leadership for really um, making it possible. And you know, I know that some of us have had tech technology issues and you've like helped us with that. And Emily says you're her computer fixer hero. <laughs> um, so really fortunate, I think earlier in our existence, um, to have good advice about choosing systems. So a lot of our, a lot of our systems were cloud-based. So when we've all started to work from home, we were able to bring a lot of, uh, a lot of our work with us with relative ease. Mm hmm. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, ha have you thought at all about when things, if things go back to normal, like whatever normal is going to be? Do you do you think that you will continue to work from home more? I'm just curious. I think it's a really interesting question. Oh, I don't know. It's uh, it's now so nice to be out and about, too. Uh, so, I mean, it's, you know, it's good to enjoy whatever the environment is at that particular time, because that's mm -hmm. what it is. <laughs> right, because that's that's what we have. <laughs> so, I mean, this has been nice, but uh, I'm sure when things uh, hopefully get back to normal at some point, it'll be nice to to return to, uh, you know, going going to an office and, and uh, getting things done there. Yeah, sit around the table with each other instead of look at squares of each other. Um, while we're in a meeting. So um, we've been talking a lot about what our next season looks like. And um, the most amazing thing I think is that we are guaranteeing that we will have a concert in some way, shape or form for every single concert date that we have scheduled. And um, that's a really, really big deal. And I'm curious to know for you from your perspective as a musician, but also as, um, you know, part of our staff, an integral part of our staff, what are you most looking forward to? Well, there's so many great things uh, on the season. I mean, just to, to think that starting with Beethoven uh, Festival and, and uh, you know, Beethoven seven, uh, it's a great, great piece for, for my instrument, but a lot of instruments, it's certainly an orchestral excerpt for most of us. Um, so that's, that's a really, a really thing, a uh, really great thing to think about starting with. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of our concerts are the, the thought that's gone into them is, 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 um, you know, it's, it's from a, a lot of different perspectives. So, so we've got committees that plan different, different parts of our season. So knowing what was in people's minds and then being able to put the concert together and communicate that to all the folks who were there, I think that's really one of the one of the most unique things about our orchestra. So many other orchestras, you know, a, a season is delivered to you in a in a in a paper, and you say, uh, "Well, I'm glad somebody picked this music. I like that one. I don't like that one. Maybe I'll enjoy playing that one. I don't know that one." In in our case, because uh, we're so involved in in the details of the planning. Of, of every aspect of the season, uh, you know, when we when we actually go and then present it to folks, because so many people have had a say in how it looks and what it was, uh, I think it has a different um, a different feel sometimes. Uh, certainly, the energy on stage always seems really really positive to me uh, as a result. Mm -hmm. For sure, I feel like when musicians are included in these kinds of decision making, like the really big parts of what from the outside looking in an orchestra produces, you know, our concerts, we feel a deeper connection mm -hmm. to each note that we play, knowing why we chose it, knowing where that impetus or the theme for the concert came from. And um, I, it's really powerful. I know I'm just speaking from my own personal well, um, like last season when we had you know our favorite things at uh saint paul's and so many of the musicians were able to provide specifics that they thought well this is why i enjoy playing this piece and then we're able to to speak about it to our patrons at the performance I, you know i think that was an example of, of of why some of the programming is so special and of course this year 
uh, with your favorite things to have That's our right. patrons being able to make some of the suggestions themselves and and we'll see maybe maybe even speak a little bit about why it's their favorite thing um uh, I think, you know, that's a really unique thing for us. Uh, mm -hmm. It makes a lot of the performances really special. For sure. For sure. Um, well, we have some great lightning round questions for you. These okay. are provided by Linda Carmona, who had her interview on Monday. And um, I think we're going to learn a little bit about John Garland in these. That's all I have to say. Are you ready? Okay. Okay, here we go. John Williams or Michael Giacchino? Oh, John Williams. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who don't know, Michael Giacchino is also a, a movie music composer, but John Williams all the way, for sure. Those horn rips. I play the horn, so. It's life, right? <laughs> Are those, do, do you ever get asked John Williams excerpts? Like, is that like a thing for auditions if you're auditioning for a horn position? Uh, not for any audition I ever went to. Um, uh -huh. You know, some of them are complicated, so they might be good to ask. Yeah, I know for for flute, um, some Harry Potter stuff has been known to make its way onto um, audition lists these days, which I think is really interesting. Um, okay, I know the answer to this, but other people might not. PC or Mac? Well, I have both. I do usually prefer working on the Mac though. Mm -hmm. um, Austin Powers one or two? A one. <laughs> That's a definite. Okay, good. Opera or ballet? Probably ballet. How come? I'm curious. Um, the rhythm. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the ballet's got a little bit, uh, oftentimes a little bit more of a structure to the rhythm, whereas, uh, you know, in a recit and opera, uh, there's a certain element of uncertainty involved with that because you remove some of the rhythm from it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so again, speaking as a horn player, I kind of like the idea of the, you know, continuous rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you, you, especially in ballet, like Tchaikovsky, that's, that's what the horn players do. Well, they keep it running. If you make a mistake in, in how you're uh, interpreting a gesture and a recit, you know, and you play the horn, it's it's pretty loud. So you, you know, everyone's going to know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I've never heard you make a mistake ever. So there's that. Um, all right. Bee feeders or Hendrix? Oh, bee feeder for sure. <laughs> I'm just speaking of gin in this case. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and last but not least, turf or surf? Oh, well, I, you know, uh, for those who know me know that I'm not a fan of seafood. So I would say turf for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, John, thank you for being here. Um, Larry totally thought you were going to say opera. So you, you shocked him well, too. I certainly like certain plenty of things about opera, but, uh, but, you know, just speaking as a horn player, I have to say, uh, I have to say ballet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Excellent. All those dances. Well, um, John, thank you so much for being here. And thank you from everyone who's watching and who will watch for all that you do and have done um, to keep Symphoria and symphonic music happening here in central New York. We um, really could not have done this without you. So thank you. Well, thank you. And we will see everyone else back here on Monday at 3.30 p.m. with um, one of our board members and super fans, Vicki Feldman. So stay tuned for that. And I hope that everyone has a great weekend. Take care.